Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today is a little bit unusual lecture. Um, usually it's all abstract mathematics, etc. Today lecture um, is about physics. More precisely about theory of relativity, special theory of relativity. Um, Einstein, many, many years ago, uh, wrote an article called Electrodynamics, where he basically derived the formulas of special theory of relativity, how coordinates are changing from one system to another, moving relative to the first one. Um, and um, quite frankly, I, I, did, I didn't understand many of the physical aspects of what he was writing about. and. Um, I kind of didn't like the fact that he used a lot of intuitive physical thinking in derivation of his formula. So, as a mathematician, um, I was thinking about maybe it can be done purely mathematically. Whatever the formulas of special relativity, of transformation of coordinates um, he could come up with, can it be really just derived very simply? I'm sure many other people did something like this before me, so I do not pretend to be um, like uh, an inventor, discoverer or, 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 of anything new. But for me, for myself personally, that was something which was new. And I didn't read about this before, I just did it myself, and I was quite satisfied with the results. Now, why I'm basically um, including this in this particular course? Well, because it's about systems of linear equations. It's a practical implementation of uh, systems of linear equations to a purely physical uh, problem. So, my, my, my task was, from certain physical aspects, derive system of linear equations, and then basically solve this system to derive the formula of transformation of coordinates. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I will try to um, to be as mathematical as possible. Um, uh, uh, however, there are certain physical aspects, but quite elementary actually, which you would agree with me that even a mathematician can, can actually accept without any kind of a problems. All right, so let me go. And um, I would like to start from certain principles, certain axioms, if you wish, um, on which the whole system of equation uh, of equations is built. So the first thing is, what are we talking about? We are talking about the following. Consider we have two systems of coordinates. One and another. So these are upper cases, x and g, and these are um, lower cases. Now, x represents a space dimension, and t represents time dimension. So, uh, as, as we know, our physical dimension is basically um, 3D. Uh, we have x, y, and z, and we can add the time parameter, like a force dimension. Now, uh, I would like to concentrate on the movements within one particular coordinate, x, it's much easier uh, to extend it to three-dimensional uh, case is basically purely uh, technical aspect which I don't want to deal with right now so let's consider we have a one-dimensional space and a dimension, one extra dimension which is the time so this is one system of coordinates another system of coordinates is moving relative to the first one with a constant speed of v, as measured in this particular um, coordinate system. So if you are an observer sitting here, this particular coordinate is moving with the permanent speed, with a constant speed v. Okay, so that's something which we can consider as given. Now, Next thing is, let's consider there is certain process which we observe in this particular system, 
And this process is changing, basically. It's object, if you wish. It's changing its coordinate, which is x. And uh, obviously, uh, 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 the time also is changing. So uh, it produces a certain trajectory in this particular system. Now, coordinates which we mark capital X and capital T in this particular coordinate uh, system um, are describing position at time of this particular object in this system. Now, how about an observer which is, which is sitting in this particular system, which is moving, and observes exactly the same process? Well, obviously, whatever coordinate uh, x and t where in this coordinate in, in this coordinate systems will be different in this because this system is moving. So the question is how, based on just this information that this system is moving relatively to this system with a constant speed v, how the coordinates will look in this system if you know coordinates in this system. Classical Newtonian mechanics actually says very simple. Time is exactly the same. And as for space coordinate, so if this thing has coordinate x, then this system, the coordinate of the same point in this system would be minus vt. Right? Because this system is moving, so at time t, it will move by this particular distance. So, if you take this particular point, uh, at time t coordinate x in this particular system, in this, it will be x minus vt, because the whole coordinate will move relative to, to this one by the amount of vt. So this is a simple Newtonian approach. Well, great, but now we had a very interesting uh, observation, which was physical observation, the experiment of Michelson, which actually says that measured in both systems, moving and and moving and and, and and standing still, speed of light is exactly the same. Now, it is impossible in the Newtonian uh, sense, because in this particular case, speed, which is actually uh, um, the r r ratio between the increment of the, um, the distance divided by increment of uh, uh, time. Obviously, the speed would be um, different in this particular case, and the difference would be v. However, if you measure the speed of light in both systems, according to the uh, experiment of Michelson, speed moves with exactly the same Speed, the light moves with exactly the same speed in both systems. And somehow, it means that these equations, well, either they do not uh, uh, re reflect the way how light is actually um, moving, they are not universal, um, or we have to you know, change equations to make them in universal. And that's exactly what Einstein did. He came up with a different transformation formula, not this one, but different one, which, um, if used, it will actually show that really speed of light moves with exactly the same, uh, is exactly the same in both systems, standing still and moving. And that's what I would like actually to, to derive using the systems of linear equation. So, I don't have this, but I, what I do have is that there is certain object which is light in this case, but it doesn't really matter from the mathematical standpoint. There is certain object, speed of which is exactly the same as measured in both systems. This is another, like an axiom, which I would like to add. So one axiom is that the system uh, lowercase xt is moving with a constant speed v relative to this one. And the second axiom which I would like to add is that the speed of some object is constant, it's c, 
And yes, physical uh, essence of this object is, is light, but it's irrelevant. So there is an object which has a, a constant speed as measured in this and in this um, coordinate system. All right, so that's given. Now let's talk about mathematics. First of all, we obviously assume that at moment t, which is equal to zero, both coordinates are um, uh, at the same place at the same time. So in the beginning of the of the time, we have both coordinates uh, at, the, at the same place, uh, which which means that if t equals to zero, then and 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 x equals to zero, which is the coordinate system. At this moment, lowercase x, uh, t, and x both or, or, or are equal to zero. That's what it means that both systems coincide at moments at moment t. So this is also a given thing. It just makes our uh, life easier. What else I'm looking for? Well, um, I'm looking for transformation of coordinates, not the ones which I have just written, which are Newtonian transformation, which we know are not true for, for, for life, but some other transformation. So basically, um, from purely mathematical standpoint, I would like to write a transformation of this kind, a linear transformation from X, uh, capital X, capital T coordinates to uh, lowercase uh, X and T coordinates. So from, uh, from uh, constantly positioned, from a standing still coordinate system, transformation into the uh, uh, coordinates of the moving system. And that's what basically we are looking for. Now, in the uh, elementary uh, case of Newtonian mechanics, as I was saying before, T is equal to capital T and lower X is equal to capital X minus VT. But in, in Einsteinian, Einsteinian mechanics, um, in the theory of relativity, where the light has constant speed C, We are looking for something else. And now our problem, actually, our task is to find these coefficients. Well, first of all, because of this condition, if t is equal, if capital T is equal to zero and capital X is equal to zero, then the lower, uh, capital, uh, lower t and x uh, are equal to zero. So the systems coincide at the very beginning. What follows is that these are equal to zero. So we don't have these three uh, constants. That makes our life easier. So we're looking for this particular system. Now let's think about what kind of conditions on P, Q, R, and S we can impose to basically find these values and that what actually will constitute um, the transformation of coordinates. So we are dealing with a problem of finding one, two, three, four, four unknown variables. And for these four unknown variables, I would like to put together a system of uh, linear equations, the result of solving which would give me these coefficients. And that's what actually is needed. And that's where the ma mathematics of it will, will, will fit. All right, so we know what we want to find. We don't need these pictures anymore. And if we will, I will draw it again. So let's think about what kind of equations we need. Now, there is some uh, piece of knowledge which you might not actually be familiar with. It's very simple one, and um, it's very simple to formulate. It's um, uh, a little bit more involved to basically explain, and uh, maybe in some uh, further lectures I will um, dedicate a certain amount of attention to this particular principle. 
The principle is as follows. You see, we are transforming coordinates from one system to another. But we don't want something like, uh, let's say, the distance between two uh, different points to be different if I measure it in this system rather than in that system. Now, as a consequence of this, we will probably don't have, let's say, angles to measure differently in one system versus another. Because these linear transformations of coordinates can be uh, stretching, can be uh, changing the position, etc. So, I don't mind to, uh, to change the coordinates in, in, in some way, except I don't want the distance between the points to be measured differently. So if I will measure distance between two points, let's say capital X1 and uh, capital T1, and capital X2 and capital uh, T2, and then I measure based on this transformation the corresponding coordinates in, in the uh, moving system, lowercase x and t, I would like to have the same results. How can I achieve this? Well, there is a very simple rule, which um, uh, it's called orthogonality of the transformation. So the transformation should be not deforming. And the criteria, if you have a, an equation, system of equations like this, to transform coordinates from one to another, is very, very simple. It's P times S minus Q times R is equal to 1. I don't want to get into why I know about this. There was the whole theory of this. It's uh, known, it's established, well established in mathematics, and I realize that you might know, but you might not know it. However, just take it as at face, basically, that this criteria is the one and only criteria which is needed for this transformation to be non-deforming. And this actually constitutes my first equation. I have to say this is not a linear equation, but nevertheless, the others will be a little bit better. But we are looking for linear transformation of the coordinates. Now, we've got this particular equation. That's one. We have four different variables, so we need four equations. All right, let's continue. Okay. Now, let's think about this. Since one coordinate system is moving relatively to another coordinate system at constant speed v, then let's think about what happens at moment, at moment t. So this is our first equation, second equation. Let's talk about moment t and x is our uh, coordinate, and I'm looking only about point which has a coordinate x is equal to 0. So what happens with this particular point? What exactly are coordinates of this particular point in the moving system? Well. If moving system is moving at the constant speed v, it means that this point, which is the beginning of coordinates at moment t, would have would have a, a, a coordinates like this. Um, um, this is one. This is another. So these are x and t. These are x and t. So what is coordinate of this system? Well, at any moment t, at any moment t, its coordinate along the x is 0, because it's the beginning of the coordinate at any moment t. Now, what is this particular 
coordinate relatively this particular point has coordinate in this particular system. Well, since this is moving with a constant speed v, at the time t, it will be on the distance vt from the beginning, speed times uh, speed multiplied by, 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 by time. So, what I would like to say that this particular point has coordinates t0 in this coordinate and capital T vt in this coordinate. So, what does it mean? It means that our transformation, and let me write down again our transformation here. So, we were talking about uh, x lowercase is equal to px plus qt, and t is equal to rx plus st. So, if I substitute, instead of t and x, I will substitute these, which are the time and coordinate of the, uh, of the uh, zero point of the moving system. In the moving system, I will get t and zero. So, let's just, you know, substitute it, and what we will have. Instead of x, I will put vt. Instead of t, it will be t. And so, instead of this x, it will be zero. And instead of t, t. So, my my system would look right, would look like this. Z is equal to P V T plus Q T and T is equal to R V T plus S T. Now, this is something which I don't really need right now, but I do need this. So I just factored out t. But now let's think about this way. This is supposed to be true for any time moment t. How can it be done only by having this equals to zero? since t can be anything. And this constitutes my second uh, equation. So, pv plus q is equal to zero. This is my second equation. pv plus q is equal to zero. This is my second equation. And again, this equation I basically derived based on the fact that the moving system of coordinates has a beginning with lowercase x coordinate 0. And the, the same point in the, uh, uh, the non-moving system has uh, x coordinate uh, as vt, because the v is a constant speed at which it's moving. And from this, I have derived this particular equation. Now, next. Now, let's remember this uh, speed of light being the same in both systems. It's very interesting consideration. Um, what is um, the speed uh, of light in the moving system, okay? If I have a, an object which is moving in the, uh, in the space relatively to the moving system, its coordinate will be t and c t, right? Always. So at any moment t, if we started actually if this particular object, uh, a, ray of light, a ray of light, started from the beginning of the coordinate, then at time t it will be on this distance from the beginning of the, uh, from the, beginning of the coordinate. 
Now, what will be its coordinates in uh, in the uh, system which is not moving? Well, that would be its coordinates. Because it's exactly the same thing, exactly the same speed. The time would be capital T, and uh, the distance it will travel be C times T. So what's interesting is that this particular and this particular coordinates, one in the moving system, another in, 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 in the system which stands still, um, are supposed to be related by the same original equation. So that, that's basically what I wanted to say. So if x is equal to capital XT, lowercase x is equal to this. So now let's go back to our original system of equations, which is x is equal to px plus qt, and t is equal to rx plus sg. Instead of x, we will substitute ct with a capital with a capital T, and we have to get ct with a lower t because this is lowercase x. So we will have ct equals p instead of x, ct, capital CT, plus qt. And t is equal to r ct plus s t. That's what we get. Now, I need the relationship between uh, P, Q, R, and S, right? So, what I will do, I will substitute this T instead of this. And what I will get, I will get C times this thing, which is R C squared T plus S C T equals P C T plus Q T. That's what I will get. And obviously T can be factored out and reduced, so I will have R C square plus C S is equal to PC plus Q plus Q. This right? RC square, yes. So this is my third equation which connects P and C, uh, P and Q and R and S. We need four, right? We have four uh, independent variables. Now, the fourth equation is exactly uh, similar to, to the third one, but instead of light going from the beginning of the coordinates towards this direction, I will send the ray of light to the opposite direction. Now, no matter which direction I will uh, send the ray of light, its speed is exactly the same and it's C, no matter what. But now the, the equation would look just very, very slightly different because at the moment capital T, the position relative to this system would be minus CT. And the position 
relative to this system would be T minus CT. So these coordinates are transformed into these coordinates. And we will use exactly the same uh, approach as before. Lowercase x, which is minus CT, is equal to P, capital X, which is minus CT, plus QT. And T is still R minus CT plus S. Now, substitute this t into this, what do I get? I get minus c times this, so it would be minus c times this, it would be minus r c squared t, then minus s c t equals minus P C T plus Q T. That's what I will get. Now, again reducing by T, I will get R C square minus S C equals minus P C plus Q. This is my fourth and the last. Uh, needed equation. Now, C is a constant. So, I have everything here which is needed to find P, Q, R, and S because everything else, C and V, are constants. So, all I need is to solve this system of equations, which, by the way, is relatively uh, e easy, and I'll show you how. Um, these are linear, these are linear, and these are linear. So three linear equations, except one has uh, the, uh, the power of two, basically. So the way how I will solve it is, for instance, I can express this uh, Q as a function of P. Q is equal to minus PV and substitute it into this and this. Um, well, before doing that, I can actually eliminate something. So let me add and subtract these two together. If I will add, my SC would disappear and my minus PC and minus PC would disappear, right? So I will have R C square equals Q. Well, actually, 2 R C square equals to 2 Q, but I will reduce by 2. Now, if I will subtract from this, I will subtract this. Now, my R C square and Q would disappear, but what, what is left would be S C and PC. So SC equals to PC. Which basically is S is equal to P. Now I can use this substitute it into this, and I will get minus PV. And what do I have now? I have Q, R, and S, all expressed in terms of P, and I can substitute it into the first equation, Q, R, and S, and I will get basically a, a, a second degree quadratic equation for, for P. Okay, let me try. I hope I will not 
get lost in, in these calculations. So um, instead of S, we can put P. So it's P squared minus QR, Q and R. So Q is minus PV, R is minus PV divided by C squared. And that's equal to 1. So this is a quadratic equation which gives me the value of P. All right, let's try to solve it. Uh, so we have P squared minus, minus, and minus, so it will be still minus. Uh, P squared, V squared, divided by C squared equals to 1. Am I right? Looks, looks fine. From which P squared equals to 1 over 1 minus V squared C squared. So I factored out P squared. I have 1 minus V squared over C squared. And then I divided 1 over it. So P is actually a square root of this. All right. Now, if I know P, I can basically find all the rest of these. So I don't need this anymore, I hope. And I'm basically ready to, to write down the transformation x is equal to P capital X. So instead of P, I will put this. So it's P divided by uh, this plus Q plus QT. Now instead of Q, I will put minus PV. Oh, this is X, obviously. And this is T. Minus PV divided by same No, I'm sorry. Instead of P, I have to Instead of Q, I have to put this. So instead of Q, I have to put this. Now, so it's V over this. Right? So I can put minus here. And I think this is the formula. Or I can um, factor out I don't need this P. This is 1. Right. Okay. That's what it is. Right. So P is 1 over this X plus Q, which is V over this with a minus sign and T. Right. That, that's the right thing. So what I will do here, I will do it this way. It's a common denominator. So I will put it here. X minus V, X minus VT on the top, and I will have this. That's my transformation of X. Now, transformation of time. By the way, speaking about transformation of X, if you remember Newtonian mechanics had only X minus VT. Now, the Einstein's relative, re, re, relativity theory adds this particular multiplier. And that's what actually makes the whole thing uh, different. This is, this quotient, this um, uh, factor, multiplier, is a, a, a hallmark of a special theory of relativity. That's what makes speed of light um, 
the constant. Now, about transformation of time. Well, in Newtonian mechanics, time is absolute. Uh, it's not changing from one system to another. In this case, it does change. So it's um, Rx plus Sg. So instead of R and S, we will substitute its values. So R is minus PV over C squared. P is this. So it would be um, minus V over C square and this multiplier. That's R, which is V over C square minus and over this, right plus st plus s, which is p, which is the same thing, so it's t. And here we can say that it's t minus v over c square, so it's t minus v over c square, times this same famous factor. So this is the answer to our problem. This is how time and space coordinates are uh, transformed in the theory of relativity. Again, in the Newtonian mechanics, we have only T lowercase t and capital T are the same, because the time is the same, absolute. In um, Einstein's relativity theory, this is a shortening of time. So the system is moving, and the time is shortening. If you read some popular things about uh, uh, relativity theory, you would notice something like um, paradox of twins, etc., and that's actually what explains it. This is the this is the reason, mathematical reason. So this is this lecture is basically an exercise in how pure mathematics can solve physical problem using a relatively um, robust and uh, rigorous approach. I basically assume certain things about coordinate system moving relative to another coordinate system with a constant speed. And what's very important, the um, result of experiment made by Michelson that the speed of light is exactly the same uh, whether it's measured in, in a um, uh, constantly positioned system versus moving relative to this uh, coordinate system. Now, out of these two, well, you can call it axioms if you wish or prepositions. Uh, everything else is derived purely mathematically, purely logically, without any kind of intuition, physical consideration, thinking, etc., etc. And these are the equations which exactly correspond to what Einstein derived in uh, uh, his famous article about uh, electrodynamics more than a hundred years ago, which was the beginning of the theory of relativity. Okay, so just an exercise in systems of equations. Um, as you saw, my system of equations for P, Q, R, and S was almost linear. I mean, three linear equations in one quadratic. Um, and that gives me a linear transformation of coordinates from one system into another, relatively, um, uh, in, uh, according to the relativity theory. Um, there are notes to this particular lecture. They are at unizor.com, as usually, uh, where all these um, prerequisites and calculations are listed. I do recommend you to go through these notes again. Uh, it will be just a nice exercise. And again, it's something which is a rare, in this particular course, a rare connection to some real life. It's not just abstract math. It's an application of abstract math to a physical problem. 
That's it. Thank you very much.